The Arctic Circle is one of the most hostile, barren environments on the planet, but paleoecologist Evan Marshall and his fellow scientists see it as the perfect location to study the effects of global warming. Working out of a Cold War era military base, Marshall and the others uncover an ancient predator encased in solid ice, believed to be a preserved saber-toothed tiger. The discovery gets immediate attention from the media network financing the expedition, which turns the base into a circus. An ambitious director intends to make a documentary covering the creature, completely overturning the scientific landmark and making a mockery of Marshall's work. However, they discover too late that the creature wasn't a saber-toothed tiger, and that it might not actually be dead. Terminal Freeze was written by Lincoln Child in 2009. Unbeknownst to me when I started, but this is the second in a series following a minor character in the book, Jeremy Logan. While I did read the first book, Deep Storm, a while back, you don't need to read it in order to get a great experience. Enough stands apart from Deep Storm that while one late reveal works better with it, the plot won't be lost on you if you go straight into this book. It's your basic monster movie kind of story. Science happens, something goes wrong, and the monster of the week goes on a killing spree. I'm going to be upfront, you've seen this story dozens of times before. The book doesn't stand out too much because of that, but there is still some fun to be had, especially with Child's writing style. Child is able to bring a few of his characters to life within only a few pages. At the very start, when we're introduced to Marshall and the rest of his team, we can tell that these are serious men with serious goals, working hard for the sake of science. You can tell that they have fears, ambitions, annoyances, the, the list goes on. Child is able to accomplish this with a running start, showing each character going through a regular day of taking field samples, then reacting to something extraordinary happening to them. They're given enough time to respond to each other and the world around them, so we get an idea of what sets them apart. Plus, the important characters all get a short introduction that gives you enough information without overstaying its welcome. It's simple writing, but something that I've seen professionals struggle to achieve. But the writing style would be useless without good characters. Marshall is a very goal-oriented person, he signed up to study global warming, but he has a strong investment in his research. He even states that if his supervisor knew how opinionated he was over the subject, Marshall would be kicked off the site for failure to remain objective. He also goes to extreme lands to save everyone from the monster once it gets out, which makes him an admirable and respectable person. Sergeant Gonzalez was the military official watching over the base. It is a military facility after all, and he was probably my favorite character. A career army man, Gonzalez has spent almost 30 years protecting the base, a shockingly long term when most military members are stationed for only six months. Gonzalez loves the base and likes the people who work there, especially the men serving under him. He takes charge when he needs to, and he's the only character who was able to pull rank on anyone from the network, in a welcomed and cathartic moment that I won't spoil. Of course, the monster isn't the only antagonist. Emilio Conti is the documentary director, and he is a grade A scumbag. Think the worst kind of Hollywood personality and you have a good idea of who he is. Conti is very concerned with his own work, disregarding anyone else's, like when he kicks Marshall out of his office for an interview because it doesn't look scientific enough. When the situation takes a turn for the worse, he greedily exploits the monster attack for his own means. He decides that this new situation will become his magnum opus, and he descends to some of the most selfish, exploitative behavior that I can recall seeing in a literary character. And that kind of writing really works. Horrible as it is, Conti stands out as the guy who you want to punch more than anything, and I can respect an author who can bring out that kind of emotion in me as a reader. Now, the characters are a good highlight of the book, but not all of them are incredible. While many characters are very dynamic, others exist simply to fill a singular role. One such character is the network executive who drove much of the documentary plot. He strong-armed the science team into compliance, threatening their jobs and their studies if they got out of line. He was detestable and shallow, but it did keep the plot moving. And then there was also Penny Barber, the computer scientist working with Marshall. Although she was introduced in a similar fashion to Marshall, she was really underutilized in comparison. She existed mostly to show off the difficulties of ice road trucking by acting as a proxy for the audience. It had almost nothing to do with her job title and it was a role that could have been filled by anyone. But the book doesn't give undue emphasis to either of these characters, so they do have a place within the story. No one in this book is truly extraneous, so you have a reason to worry for all of them when the monster attacks. Speaking of the monster, there are some things that worked and some things that didn't. What worked was that the monster was unpredictable and frightening. Anyone who so much looked at this thing was practically traumatized. The monster even had its own behaviors and desires, like a cat playing with a mouse. It was hard to track and even harder to kill. 
but the explanation for it was a little... off. But for me to talk about that, I need to get into spoiler territory, which will also ruin the ending. Skip to here if you just want to go straight to the rating. Child makes the decision to explain where the monster came from, and while that's fine, there's a reason Stephen King said that logic is the enemy of suspense. Initially, we're told that millions of years ago, the monster naturally evolved as an alpha predator to feast on an otherwise plateauing buffet of prey. I'm not sure how that means the monster could be effectively bulletproof or immune to enough electricity to kill a man a hundred times over. The monster had a healing factor that Deadpool would be proud of, and it sounded completely unnatural. Now, the very end of the book tried to cover that by suggesting that other elements were at play, akin to alien involvement. But the last third of the book didn't have that information to support it, so the book kind of came off as using junk science until the very end. And again, I went into this not knowing that it was a sequel to Deep Storm, so the idea of aliens being involved completely escaped me. Plus, there was the way the monster was finally finished off. The scientists hooked up a sonic weapon that literally made the monster's head explode a la scanners. By this point in the book, the monster had been built up to the point where there was almost no other way to kill it, but even so, this came off as a tad silly. Still, the book had been a shameless action story, much like a standard summer popcorn action movie, so the ending at least fit and didn't feel unwelcome within the context of the book itself. But it's still weird. Overall, Terminal Freeze is pretty good. Not a bad time to be had, for sure. The characters really stand out, but the plot has already been done a thousand times on the sci-fi channel, and the science isn't there. But if you're looking for a basic monster story in a what-has-science-done sort of way, you'll find enough to enjoy here. So, have you read the book? What did you think? If not, do you want to read it now? Whatever your thoughts, comment below and stay tuned for more.